What scares me? So, I'm standing there about to operate. It's a 29-week infant. She was born three weeks prematurely. It's so three weeks earlier, at 26 weeks. And she weighs 600 grams. She's on a ventilator, on maximum ventilatory pressure. She has severe acidosis, lactic acidosis, despite everything the neonatologists have done for her. She's on maximal inotropic support. We take an abdominal film, and there's NEC and clear perforation. It's clear that she requires a laparotomy. The neonatologists and I discuss it with her mother and point out the huge risks of operating, but also the huge risks of not operating. And the thing at the forefront of my mind, my fear, is of bleeding in these neonates. Their homeostasis, I think, is just made up. It, it, the numbers don't make sense. They have a pH that is not compatible with life, and yet they're alive. But bleeding in a neonate is a real problem. It's a real problem not only because we don't seem to understand why it happens. It's not that there's a big blood vessel that I could get control of. It's just that everything bleeds. If you weigh 600 grams, circulating blood volume at best is probably 60 mils. That means a catastrophic blood loss of 40% is about 24 mils. That's half a shot glass. That literally is a tablespoon. And I'm stood there about to operate. What scares you? Really, this is what Vic has introduced. I want you to consider what scares you. What scares me? I was operating on a child with a Wilms tumor. Wilms tumor is a malignant tumor of the kidney. And in the UK, what we do is we have a, a biopsy of the tumor and then give them chemotherapy, shrink the tumor down, and then do surgery about six to eight weeks later. So we had this little lad who had a massive tumor, the one that fills the whole of the abdomen, looks worse than pregnant. And as we started his chemotherapy, about three weeks in, once his numbers had fallen to horrible levels, he started to bleed into the tumor. The tumor consumed his circulating blood volume in a two-day period. He had to be transfused back up again. The same thing happened another day, and it was clear that we would have to operate on him. I spoke with two of my colleagues who have lost patients on the table with this problem, even after opening their chest to get control of the aorta. So I had to take this kid to theater got control of the hyalur vessels. That's how we take the kidney out, having dissected around the back. I had them in slings, and then everything started to bleed. Everything. The best I could do, I put a clamp straight across the hilum and took the kidney out. I could not get access to the IVC or to the aorta because of the size of the tumor. Got control with the clamp and then dissected everything off that was left, tied it off, and there, in the left iliac fossa was a thick, muscular tube that was no longer pulsating. For five minutes, I was convinced that this was the common iliac artery. My hands were shaking. I could not feel a pulse proximal to it. I was afraid. What scares you? It's a real challenge, and I want you to think about that. I want you to see what frightens you. And I'm not talking about stress, I'm talking about fear. They might be simple things that frighten you. It may be interpreting an ECG on a patient with atypical chest pain. You don't know why, it just terrifies you. It might be something stressful in the uh, pre-hospital existence, in a field, doing an RSI on a patient as his partner lies dead. What scares you? The third story, I used to work in another center, and approximately 13 years ago, I was in my office opening letters. The department was fairly dysfunctional. 
we're surgeons, that's how these things go. Uh, there were arguments, there were disagreements, there were I know better than you discussions. And as I opened this envelope, which was hand addressed, never trust the hand addressed envelope. I opened it up, it said, Dear Mr. Fisher, a serious complaint has been raised against you with regard to your clinical practice. On the basis of this, we are going to arrange a Royal College of Surgeons review. We will assess the 12 patients listed below that is alleged to a very poor standard of clinical care. On the basis of this review, the trust will take a view as to how to proceed. It is likely we will refer you to the General Medical Council. What scares you? That thing that you're thinking about. Whoever you are, whatever you do, there are things that we are afraid of. Not just stress, but afraid of. Fear is real. Fear is real and it affects us. But the first thing I want to say to you is it's okay to be afraid. It is okay to be afraid. It's okay to be afraid because being afraid is about recognizing threat. It's about seeing that there is a limitation to your ability and that this situation is beyond you. It's okay to be afraid. Now, what does fear do to us? Fear is different from stress. I would thoroughly commend to you the stress inoculation therapy workshops. They're taking the heat. The guys have been doing an amazing job on helping people understand that stress in our work is part of what we do. Chris Hicks, in his talk at Blood and Sand, commented that we need a degree of stress in our performance to maximize that, so that we are amped up and ready to go. There's a difference between stress and fear, and fear is what I'm talking about, not stress. Fear is when we are way, way into the red zone. When we are afraid, our hands shake so much, we cannot perform simple tasks. The pounding in your head is due to the tachycardia and the hypertension. You breathe so fast it's like you've been running. You focus bizarrely, amazingly, on only one thing, but you can see nothing else around you. You don't take in auditory or visual clues. You're unable to cognate. You cannot think properly. You cannot remember things. You cannot do calculations. You cannot make decisions. Questions and opportunities from other people are perceived as threat, and we deny everything. That is what it is to be truly afraid. Now, fear lives in the amygdala. Fear is probably hardwired for lots of things. I have never met a saber-toothed tiger, but I know if one stepped out in front of me, I would be afraid. That's a good thing, because you don't want to have to learn to be afraid of a saber-toothed tiger. It doesn't happen. Medical fear is not hardwired. The things you are afraid of have been conditioned. We have learned to become afraid of things. The reason why we're afraid of things is complex. It may be from operant conditioning, constant negative reinforcement, from being disciplined, from being shouted at, from just not understanding things, from seeing other people perform in a way that you think you never can. Fear then develops with a repetition to the point at which it becomes an issue. Why we're afraid is not important. It's simply important to recognize that we are afraid. Fear is real, and it affects us acutely, but it also affects those around us. We are social animals. If someone in a group yawns, you feel the need to yawn. Please don't yawn. If someone giggles, we will giggle with them. If someone in our group is afraid as a social group, we will protect that person. But we will also become aware of their fear affecting us subconsciously. 
And we will then start to become more afraid, particularly if that person is a senior, a chief, someone we respect. When they begin to show fear, we think there must be something I don't understand, and so I take on their fear. And the reality is that with stress inoculation therapy, we can be better performers. But the reason that things go wrong in stressful incidents is not because of a lack of training. It's not because of a lack of knowledge. The literature is clear. It's because of poor performance due to fear. Fear is real. We all have fear, no matter who we are or what we are, no matter our level of seniority or juniorness. Whatever job we do, there are things clinically that we are afraid of. And you're thinking of it right now. I'm sorry, but I think it's a good thing to think about the fear. And what I'd like to do is, uh, bizarrely, ask for audience participation. I'm not going to ask you to do anything more difficult than simply stand up if you feel you can. And I believe that this is a worthwhile thing to do for this amazing community. The way you look after each other, I think this will help. It's brave to ask this, but what I would like is, in recognizing things I have done in the past, I am now no longer afraid of them. I have learned not to be afraid. And I'll come to why that is, because the way that fear works is that we often outgrow it. We get to the point where we have learned not to be afraid of these things that we were afraid of in the past, but now are afraid of no more. And the reason for that is a wonderful little part of our brain called the hippocampus. It moderates our fear output through the amygdala. It is the place of conscious recollection. We remember how it wasn't as frightening now as it was the last time, and we are less afraid of that situation. But here's the thing. It's also the place where we remember how bad it really was. We remember when it turned to shit. When I, I couldn't see what to do. When I really didn't know what I was going to do. I was getting scrubbed in the operating theater. I was trying to put my gloves on. And the nurse, she asked me that terrible, terrible question. Are you OK? And the tears started to run down my face. I couldn't see to put my gloves on. And then my shoulders started to go, and she laughed. She said, what are you laughing at? And it was then, right then, that I finally broke. It's difficult. It's really difficult. I'm sat there on the floor in the scrub room, sobbing. And bless her, the nurse really did not know what to do. <laughs> what do you do with this? broken man. And I was afraid. I didn't know what to do. I could not think anymore. And which clinical situation do you think that was? About to operate on a 600 gram neonate who might bleed to death at my hand? No. Or maybe it was where I thought I divided the common iliac artery. No. It was when a colleague tried to have me struck off. So, audience participation. This is the brave bit. Can I ask anyone for whom this has resonated? If in the past you have been afraid, would you please stand up to show others that you're no longer afraid of that? This is a really brave thing. Thank you for starting that off. Thank you. As people are standing up, I'm going to continue talking. You're amazing. <laughs>
These people are standing up because they recognize in the past they had fear. There are still some people who are sat down, and I hugely respect you. It may be that you've not had fear. It may be that you don't feel brave enough to stand up, and that is okay. Please do not feel forced. But I would also ask for anyone who has not stood up yet, who knows there is fear in their life now, to please join this group. The next bit's not going to work, but I'm going to change this slightly. The reason I asked you to stand up was because in standing up, we acknowledge to ourselves that we know what fear is. And fear is real for all of these people. None of these people are undertrained. None of these people are weak. None of these people are people, let me put it the other way, I would love to be treated by any of you. And as you look around at the friends and colleagues who have stood there, what do you feel for them? Do you feel they are weak or stupid or foolish? Or do you feel something inside of you? That is called empathy. And that is how we will counter fear. Please sit down, you're amazing. Fear is real. Fear is real and it has really bad effects on us if we don't recognize it. But the reality is that if you're afraid, the best thing is if someone stands with you. It's about recognizing fear, not ignoring it, not hiding from it. But no one asks you what you're afraid of. No one's pointed at you. No one has suggested you're weak or foolish. It's in recognizing fear that we recognize the brutality of what we do. The reality of what we do and the humanity of what we do. It is in recognizing fear that we will counter it. I'm no longer afraid of neonates that bleed because of the people who stood with me. I am no longer afraid of dissecting renal tumors that might bleed out because of the people who stood with me. I am no longer afraid of being struck off because of the people who stood with me and encouraged me and supported me and gave me a reflection of who I really am rather than the anger of the man who is now my friend who tried to have me struck off. Fear is real. You have been amazing, and thank you for standing and sharing that with all of your colleagues. Sometimes, when we're on our own and afraid, what we need to hear is the voices in our head of our chiefs, our heroes, our colleagues, our friends. And that, that is how we will counter fear. I'm no longer afraid. Thank you.